What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna be talking about Arrow Season 7, episode titled Living Proof, so careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with Arrow this season. You've been warned, let's get into it. So this episode has me with a lot of mixed feelings, and as I go through this review with you guys and give you my thoughts, I want you to understand that I wanted to really like this episode, but there were parts that just bothered me so much that it kind of left me torn at the end. So with this episode, we pick up right where we left off, last week with Emiko bringing this building down on Oliver and the rest of Team Arrow. And in this week, we have Oliver being trapped, Team Arrow being trapped, Felicity's trying to avoid the cops, and the future is still annoying as ever. So let's go ahead. We're going to start off this time with the stuff that I liked because I think this episode had a lot of strong elements in it. I just think it faltered a tiny bit. So with the stuff I like, the first thing that I want to talk about is the Tommy and Oliver scenes. Even though we find out that they are hallucinations as we suspected, it just goes to show how strong the casting was for these characters back in season one and how good they still are now all of these seasons later. I loved seeing these interactions. Tommy and Oliver, I mean, it brought tears to my eyes in certain scenes. There was one scene in the middle where Tommy was talking about his connection with his father and how that draws parallels to what's going on with Oliver right now and his family. And all of that I thought was really well done. I mean, I'm sad it was a hallucination because it wasn't really Tommy. It was Oliver's projection of who Tommy was. But at the same time, we got those scenes together. We saw the two of them in frame having these conversations, and I just loved having them back. I would love to have Tommy back as a regular character, but at this point, it feels like bringing him back with everything that happened, is, you know, particularly in this episode leading into next season, would be all for nothing in terms of like growth and development for Oliver as a character so I don't know if we're going to ever see Tommy come back to the show whether it be like in a another you know dream sequence or from another earth or something like that I think that ship is kind of sailed and this episode was really the last goodbye from Oliver to Tommy even though it wasn't the real Tommy I still feel like that's what they were trying to do with that um, I also really enjoyed the nudges to why Felicity is leaving the city with the situation with the cops and the stuff with Emiko. That leads to a problem I'll talk about later. But with the cops coming after Felicity having a warrant for her, and based on what happens at the end of this week's episode, I think that's probably going to have something to do with why Felicity goes off the grid. That kind of makes sense. Also, the fact that Emiko came after Felicity, I think, to get leverage on Oliver. At least I feel like that's what it was. I'm not really sure what the reason was. It seemed like she went there to kill Felicity, but then I, I don't know if that was the reason why she went. Uh, when she found out that Felicity was pregnant and, she, you know, Elena was there with her, she just bailed. Like, I figured, like, as I was watching, I'm like, this has to be for leverage. And it's going to be something that comes up later. And then it does come up later, but it ends up not really coming up later. And you guys know what I'm talking about, but I'm going to dive into that when I get into the stuff that I didn't like for this episode. But I did like how they set up Felicity leaving. I think it makes sense. And I'm totally on board with the way they're doing it. I know a lot of people are, are not happy, especially huge Felicity fans are not happy that she's not going to be around next season. But this, right now, the way it's working in season seven, it makes sense in the story, even if it's sad to see her go. Um, the fight choreography stunt work always, 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 I tell you guys, whenever I talk about Arrow, I don't think there's a show on network television that has better fight choreography than Arrow other than maybe Into the Badlands. Into the Badlands is, is on another level, but that's also super expensive show. It takes them forever to film. Arrow does their stunt work and all of their things within a really short amount of time. And I just have to give them props on that. Roy Harper's fight scenes are awesome. And it just reminds me of how much I loved Roy Harper back in the day and how much I would love to have him back now. So yeah, I just, again, can't, I can never give them enough credit. I really love the fight scene at the end in the hallucination world. I thought that was really cool, but that's also problematic. And we'll talk about that as well. So another thing I enjoyed was the overall quality of work with the actors. It seemed like it was at a pretty high level with the exception of a couple of people. I think if you look back at the Tommy and Oliver scenes, they were very, very, very good. I think most of the scenes between Team Arrow and each other were pretty good with the exception of Dinah. I think Dinah was kind of, and we're going to discuss that. Uh, the future stuff, I don't really count. I think the Elena and, and uh, Felicity stuff was pretty good. Emiko still slowly growing on me, and I, I mean, we'll have to see where it lands next season, because I do believe that Emiko will carry into season eight. If she doesn't, I'll be very surprised, based on how much time we have left, because we only have one episode. 
So, um, so anyway, uh, as far as like stuff I didn't like in the episode with the actors and things, uh, we're going to move on to that with, um, Dinah proves again, uh, that she's an inconsistent character. She has no clear personality. Uh, one of the things that stood out uh, for me in this was when they were talking about getting out of the situation and how to like sort of clear their name. Uh, she was, <laughs> she was just willing to throw Roy under the bus basically. Um, and then at the end, after Roy went into the poison gas and then came out, she was so upset about it. And then she's willing to forgive him for what he did with those two officers just a couple of scenes later. But then she carried the grudge for Black Siren after killing Vince, even though she's not thinking about the families of the officers who were also killed. It's such a weird thing. Like Dinah just to me, it, she does whatever the writers need her to do because they need it to happen. And so they've never given her the opportunity to actually have a real, like, I don't know who Dinah is as a character. I mean, yeah, she's a police officer. She's a meta. She's a vigilante, but who is Dinah Drake? Who is she as a character? I couldn't even tell, like, if you were to ask me to give you a quick rundown of like who she is, it's all backstory. There's nothing that's stuck with her throughout everything she's done because she's flipped and jumped around. Her decisions have been sporadic and, and all over the place. And so as a character, it's just really weird. Like she's willing to go after black siren forever about what happened to Vince, but she's willing to forgive, uh, you know, Roy for what he did within a few minutes, technically as a mistake. Like it's just a mistake. I, I just, I don't understand her character and this is prevalent all the way up to the future scene. So, but they had to make her and Roy come to a uh, site, like, I guess, an agreement or some sort of a head with each other because they are good in the future. Anyway, uh, the future scenes, uh, prove again to be problematic. We just keep revealing that people are still around like Elena being in the future. I thought, okay, there's Elena. It's cool seeing her, but now we pretty much know that she is going to be the one taking over that role that Felicity has next season. Uh, probably as the person behind the desk for team arrow, if they continue to do team arrow next season, cause we still not, we're not sure yet about what they're going to be doing. We'll have to wait till the finale to find out, but she's definitely going to be around and she's going to be that character who's running the company for Felicity while Felicity's off the grid. I think all of this was kind of everybody that I talked to was kind of in the agreement that that was what was going to happen, which is why she was sort of introduced kind of out of nowhere. It was, it was a weird, like, Oh, Elena's back. Okay. Uh, the Zeta program in the future was really the only thing I did like because it was a it was like a nod to Batman Beyond. So that was kind of cool. It was cool to see that. And we do know that they're robots now. There was a question whether they were humans with suits or were they robots, but now it's confirmed they're they're just full-fledged robots, but they're putting them in tactical clothing because that way they don't have to CGI them. That makes the most sense. Uh, so here's the thing. This is probably my biggest issue with the episode. The fact that it can spend the majority of its time around a narrative that's leading us down a path only to be revealed that it's a hallucination. I guess this now beats out the true crime thing for me having a least favorite type of episode. I didn't like the way the switch happened. It was very abrupt and sudden in the, in the cuts and the way it was done. It was like a double, double hallucination because at the beginning of the episode, when we see Oliver trapped under the cement, and Tommy's there, we see Tommy push the arrow over to Oliver. So you think for a second, okay, are the writers going to forget that this happened? Are they going to show how the arrow moved? Because obviously Tommy is a hallucination, getting people to believe that maybe he's not. And I, and I do believe that's, that was a purposely misleading moment based on what happens at the end. So I thought, are they going to forget about this? Or are we going to call back to it? But it doesn't even matter because that was just, again, a misdirect because we find out that Oliver was was hallucinating everything on his end because he was separated from the team. So all the stuff with Felicity that happened in the real world actually happened. All the stuff with Team Arrow that they were doing away from Oliver actually happened. And all, of course, all the future scenes actually happened. But anything that Oliver was involved with up until that hallucination was not real. And this brings me to another huge problem. There were some smaller problems with that hallucination that... I'm not going to get into at the moment, but the biggest one for me was the fact that when Emiko went after Felicity, that's when she found out that Felicity was pregnant. And I thought, okay, this is going to be used as leverage against Oliver in a fight at the end of the episode, sort of pushing Oliver over the edge. And then it kind of was because we had that fight at the end where it was team arrow versus the ninjas and, 
and Emiko and Oliver goes after Emiko and she leads in with that right away. First thing she says, I'm like, okay, that makes sense. Then we find out that that is also part of the hallucination because when Oliver shoots Emiko and then Emiko shoots Diggle, it's like, then you look on the floor and everybody's been shot and they're all like in this big circle. And I'm just like, oh, all right, what is going on here? And then the reveal happens. And then I think like, well, how in the world could Emiko have revealed to Oliver that she knew Felicity was pregnant in a hallucination? Because Oliver didn't find out that Emiko actually went to visit Felicity until the end of the episode. And that was an immediate thing that jumped out at me. As soon as I found out it was a hallucination, I'm like, how could she have used that against him? We didn't even find that out until it was it was on in uh, Felicity's situation in the episode, and then Oliver didn't find out to the end. So there's no way that Emiko would have known before that. The information wouldn't have been dropped before the building blew up on top of them. So... Yeah, didn't like that at all. I thought that it was a cop out and it really kind of I I really enjoyed the content like the content in the episode like individually as pieces, but I didn't like the hallucination storyline that got sort of um I don't know, it didn't work out very well. It's an ambitious thing. I have to give the writers credit for trying to do it, but it just felt like they dropped the ball on a couple things and they didn't really wrap it up very well at the end. Um let's see. Uh like the SCPD being fooled by, a, like, the, the fake Green Arrow again. Uh, so it's a shorter, thinner fake Green Arrow that's been known to be fake running around with ninjas uh, being confused or misidentified as Oliver Queen. Now, some people were saying that it was because the police force has proven to be stupid, right? Especially in this season. Uh, but I would say at this point, it's like purposely making them stupid by the writers because... There's no reason, at least from my perspective on the show, that Oliver would be doing the things he's been doing, according to the police department, like the stuff that Emiko has been doing dressed up as Oliver. I think it's an after the fact thing because Emiko definitely wasn't doing bad stuff as Green Arrow when she first showed up in the city. And now she's trying to do bad stuff as Green Arrow, even though her agenda has been the same. Yeah, it's like, so you you weren't trying to tarnish his image in the beginning because you were doing good stuff. Now you're trying to tarnish his image at the end. And we, we all know everybody's aware there's a fake green arrow much shorter than Oliver queen, much thinner than Oliver queen that runs around with a group of ninjas. So the police department constantly believing that that's Oliver queen after we know for a fact that it isn't is ridiculous. It's, it's, out of all the praise that I can give this season, that's the one thing where I'm just like, this is not good. It's not good at all. And we keep going back to it, and it's because they want to constantly make vigilantes an issue for the city. And this time, it's gotten to the point where it just doesn't, it doesn't make any sense anymore. It did, and I could buy it up until now. I think this season, after everything that Oliver's been through, going to jail, working with the police department... I just don't believe it anymore. I don't. And then at the end, we see that Team Arrow is probably going to get arrested once again, right before the season finale, and we're going to have to deal with that, at least for a portion of the episode next week, or something along those lines. I'm really hoping that I'm wrong. I really hope that they, the mayor or somebody drops down and says, I get it, it's not you, go after her, get her, you know, repay her for everything she's done to the police department, something like that. Please, someone have some common sense here because now it feels like it's just getting in the way for sake of getting a, getting in the way. And I just don't want to deal, like this storyline is done. Like it's so stupid. I don't want to see it anymore. I think we're all tired of the vigilantes constantly being chased down by, by the police department after they've already been accepted in as being good guys. And now all of a sudden they're bad guys. again. It's just, it is so, so dumb. And it's so convoluted. And the way we got there, the, the, how that story happened, it's just ridiculous. Obviously, there's a fake green arrow that runs around with ninjas. And there's an arrow that runs around with Team Arrow. They're not the same person. And if the police department doesn't know that by now, then they deserve everything that's coming to them. So the last thing I want to talk about before I give my score is this redemption of Emiko, which I don't think can be a thing anymore. Uh, she's done everything with intention. And she's made it very clear that her motives were her own that nothing that she's done has been, she's not had her strings pulled. She's not been corrupted. She's literally done all this stuff because she wanted to do it. And I think that that proves that she's not a redeemable character in the sense of like turning around and being a good guy. There's a lot of people that don't want to hear that. I think it's just at this point, you just have to accept it. Oliver wanting her to be good and trying to change her. I think 
what happened at the end of this episode, if it was going to happen, it should have happened then. I don't think we need to drag it on any further into the next episode. I think that also ruins the moments or the lessons that Tommy taught Oliver in the beginning of this episode or that Oliver taught himself in the beginning of this episode and spent most of his story in this hallucination world only to have her literally just say, no, I'm not interested because we all kind of knew that's where things were going to go. And if she said yes, then that would leave very little reason for any of the events to, to cascade the way they are. Like with Felicity leaving with, uh, you know, season eight of arrow having some sort of a big bad, because we know it's too late to introduce somebody brand new. So the ninth circle is going to have to be the big bad going into next season. It's just, there was no time for those changes. So this episode as a whole was again, a 10 minute episode spread out over 40 some minutes, uh, that ultimately doesn't add very much other than saying goodbye to Tommy, which I loved it. Don't get me wrong, but I, I'm just like, are, like, <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing right now? So I feel like Arrow has stumbled just a bit, especially going into the back half of the season. And I loved what Beth Schwartz was doing with the show in the beginning. And I actually loved the, the overall story. I just don't like some of the stuff that's happening. I don't like the way some of it's being handled and some of the direction that characters have gone. And, you know, I, I feel like it's just, I don't know. I, I'm just like, again, I'm mixed. I'm torn. I didn't hate this episode. It's way better than last week for me. But the hallucination stuff with Oliver was really, really, really kind of all over the place. And the future stuff I don't like. And so it's like, I got to pick and choose here. I don't think it was a bad episode. I'd watch it again. It's not necessarily one of those episodes where I'd like I would skip it. No, I'd probably watch it again just for the scenes between Tommy and Oliver, even though I know it's not really Tommy. So with that being said, I'm going to give the episode a seven out of ten. I still think it's a it's a fine episode to watch. The fight scenes were really good. It was good seeing Roy do all of his stuff. The, the scenes between Tommy and Oliver were really good. The future stuff I could do without, but everything else I thought was okay. It was watchable. And slightly better than watchable in certain ways. So 7 out of 10, I feel like, is a good place for me for this episode. So what I want to do is um, give you guys an opportunity to go up in the corner over here and select whether you agree or disagree with my score. Do you think it's too high? Do you think it's too low? Do you agree? Whatever your thoughts on that, go down in the comment section and give me your opinion. Give me a piece of your mind because I would love to know what you guys think about all this. And that's what the comment section is for. You don't have to agree with me. Um, I've had people argue a little bit with me about how harsh I could be on shows, but that's why I don't really stifle opinions. If you don't like what I'm saying, the comment section is there for you. Right. And I think it would be boring if we all felt the same way about everything. So that's just how it goes. So, uh, yeah. Uh, if you're brand new to my channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like more content like this, I make videos all week long as well as live streams. And as we're coming up to the end of the season, I've got a lot more plans for other videos. So I'm super excited about that. Give me a like if you enjoyed this video. And again, the comment section is for you guys to be heard because you've heard me talk. Now it is your turn. With that being said, I'm going to get out of here. Um, and I've got some stuff to do today. And then, you know, hopefully a live stream tonight for, uh, for the after party. Hope to see you guys then. So make sure you turn on that notification bell. So see you guys in the next video.